Okay, something else to talk about is, is learning line, risk and challenge. What, what does learning look like? Okay. And, and I think, again, educators in the business of education, it kind of stuns me that we don't talk about the brain, or until recently, very little has been talked about the brain. I suppose we've learned a lot over the last 10 years about how the brain does change. Um, but to me, that's fundamental to talk to children about that. But also about what learning looks and feels like. And um, this is an example. You know, we, we talk about you know, being in the pit or being in the dip. When we're told we're, we're going to be doing something new, we don't know what it is, we can, we, it can feel quite scary. You know, child turns up to a lesson and teacher starts introducing something new they've never heard of, but that that's okay. And to actually get to the other side, we're going to have to go through that process of, of struggling and, and getting it wrong and taking a risk and it, and it being challenging. Um, and this, as you go back on, Jamie, that, that teacher, um, the head teacher of this school, uh, the school was due to close at the end of last academic year. And at the beginning of the year, she thought, oh, I've got this wall. Who's going to say I can or can't draw on it? So she's just decided to, to paint on the wall. It, it was pretty massive and got all the children to write little comments reflecting on their learning. I was stuck in the pit of learning when I tried to do a 720, which is two 360s. I kept trying and now I can do it really well. Something to do with skateboarding or scooting, I think. Um, but, uh, and also using it as a, as a kind of ref learning journey, reflection, assessment tool of a child plotting where they are in maths and learning a particular thing. And it might be that they're down, down where they're finding it difficult longer than some of their peers might be, but that doesn't matter, okay? It's not about comparing yourself to someone else. It's the teacher helping them understand they're still here, what do they need to do in order to be able to get out there and work their, work their way up. We've got some children to, to do their own, to reflect on their own, what, what it feels like to them to be down there, describing using their own words. And Isabella here has used her own self-talk as to how, how she'd get out, have a growth mindset, don't give up now, almost there. And she could have this on her desk, she could ref refer to it, so she actually understands where she is on any particular um, thing she's trying to learn. We've also introduced the idea of a challengeometer, which is again, I found in, in, in sport, is how do we know when players, athletes are at a particular level of challenge? We kind of look at them and, and kind of guess a little bit. So it's a simple idea of having a challengeometer, so getting people, if they're doing their own sort of self-directed session, is to, is to ask them, look, in your session today, where are you likely to be on the challengeometer? And little photo, bit of blue tack, stick it on the challengeometer today where they are. Equally, at the end of a session, if, if I've led it and been more directive, it's to say, well, okay, just move your picture on the challengeometer so I know where you were on a level of challenge. And just taking a simple photo at the end of every session, you get a bit of a build-up of, actually, here's a child who's actually always in the blue or green zone. Or here's a challenge, a, a lad who's constantly in the red zone and actually I need to do a little bit more facilitation maybe to help him decrease that level of challenge as he, as he gets better. So again, articulating challenge and helping people understand where they are is really important. Okay, this teacher, again, it's how, how teachers just interpret this themselves, what they do. She used um, ice creams as a way of helping children see, well, what, you know, how are you challenging yourself today? What level of challenge are you at? Are you going to be ready for a feast? a real high level of challenge, or are you going to stick with something that you, that you know already? Which is okay if you're trying to consolidate some learning and get really fluent at it, but actually making sure that children aren't always choosing or doing levels of work that aren't challenging enough. 